folks, Nick Donatelli here, and welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. Today we'll be covering a suggestion from one of you. It's the traditional particle morph. So there's a ton of ways that you could approach this effect. So I'm just going to show you the way that I like to do it. It leaves room for a lot of control, a lot of ways to change the look, which is always nice when you're working in a production setting. So let's just get into it. So we need two objects to morph between. So I'm just going to do the pig head and the rubber toy using Houdini's basic geometry and move the pig head up 0.9 and I'm going to scale the rubber toy 1.5 so that they're similar in size and position. Now make a scatter node and I'm just going to add an extra zero so 10,000 points. When it comes to rendering, you're going to want a lot more than this, but for the sake of previewing, we're going to keep it low. So we want the same amount on the sep second object. So hold Control, Alt, and Shift, and then drag this node over, which will make a linked copy. That way, if we change the values on one of them, it'll automatically adjust to the other one. So in the second geometry, I'm going to do an attribute create and name it goal. I'm going to set it to size of 3. And in the type, or in the value, I'm going to type at p.x, at p.y, and at p.z, so that we're basically just setting it to the position. Now I'm going to do an attribute copy, setting it to goal. And this gives each of the points a final position to aim for. So it's done randomly by the scatter, linking you know which point goes where. But you could drop a sort here if you wanted to say have the points from the top move to somewhere on the top of the new area. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it completely random. Now we're just going to do another attribute. Create and name it ID and do a value of at PT num. Now drop a null and name it in in caps. And just wire that up to a pop net. And let's dive inside. So in the source, change the emission type to all points. Now in the impulse activation, type $SF equals equals 1. And this is saying to emit from the first simulation frame. And that's it. So for some motion, we're going to make a pop wrangle. Typing at air resist equals fit 01 parentheses rand, parentheses at id, close that parentheses, comma, 0.5, comma, 1.2, close parentheses, and a semicolon. This is just giving us some drag before we actually go in and make our force, which we'll do in a pop fop. So hop in there. I'm going to make a bind, setting it to three floats vector and type our goal attribute in. Now subtract the current position from this and normalize that. And if you hit or bind that out to the force, and now if you hit play, you can see the effect is already happening. It's starting to move towards where it needs to go. So I just want to add some more complexity to this. So first I'm going to do an anti-aliased noise and just add that to the force. And you can see that we have this problem where the particles never really settle at the end. So what I like to do is I'll do a distance node from the goal to the current position. And you want to fit that. I'm going to fit it from 0 to 0.1 to, well, I want it to affect by 0 0.7 to 0. And then do a mix of the current position and then the goal, and hook this fit to the bias. So now that when the particles are getting close to their goal, we're kind of just nudging them into place, trying to get them to say, hey, stay here. Now, the last thing that I want to do is I want to prevent this from happening all at once. Currently, they're all there, then they just start moving on frame one. So to do this, we're going to hop outside the sim and make a point pop. I'll do a turbulent noise with the frequency up a little bit. 
and unbind this to the color just for seeing it at the moment. Now do a compare node set to greater than and we're going to do a fit on the frame. So this noise uh, by its default state just goes from 0 to 0.5 so I'll have it go from frames 1001 to 1060 and fit it to 0.5 to 0. Now you can see that we have this growth. So disconnect it from color and bind export that to an attribute that I'll call emit. So now back in the popnet, we're going to make a SOP solver. Dive in there and use an object merge to grab our in. And then just do an attribute copy. telling it to grab the emit attribute that we just made. Then pop up and go into our pop vop, which is creating the force, and multiply the force. Then do a bind to grab that emit attribute and wire that in. So hop back out, hit play, And there you have it. That's just a simple particle morph setup. Again, you'll want to do 10 times, maybe even 100 times the amount of particles when you actually get into render time. But that's something you'll have to figure out when you're exploring that. And that's it for this one. If there's any effects that you'd like to see tutorials for in the future, please send them to me in the comments. The project files for this one are on the site. Hope you enjoyed this one. And until next time.